Hello and welcome to a fast interview uh, from New Zealand. While I'm here during my trip, I'm going to be speaking with a number of uh, candidates and activists to uh, give you all an idea of uh, politics in New Zealand, what are the big issues in this election, and also, most of all, what Australia can learn from it. Today I am speaking with, well, not a uh, mainstream uh, group in this election, but more a grassroots activist. Uh, organisations. I'm here with uh, Joy Britton from Pro-Life Auckland, which is a uh, student uh, organisation at the, the University of Auckland here, who do pro-life activism and, and support. Now they've recently uh, been disaffiliated from the University Student Association for basically uh, having the, the wrong opinion, so it's an, another example of uh, free speech being stifled at university campuses. It seems that's the same all around the world. So I thought we'd invite Joy on to uh, talk about the organisation and also their recent experience. So Joy, thank you for coming on. Thanks for having me. So obviously universities, they're not known for being friendly territory for uh, right-wing groups, if, if I'm to use that term loosely. Uh, why was this uh, club formed in, you know, in such a hostile environment? Um, we, we formed the club because we think this is an imperative issue that um, students need to hear about. Um, it's, the cause is intensely important to us and um, whether our opinion is popular or not in the culture that we're in, we think it's, it still needs to be voiced um, because of what's at stake. Um. And, and has there been, like obviously there, there's been a lot of opposition, but has there, uh, have you, you know, drummed up a lot of support among uh, university students. What's the, what's the reception been, been like apart from sort of the, the, the hysteria, mm -hmm. uh, if I should use that word? Um, the group's relatively small. We have um, 15 or so active members. Um, and yeah, the, the activities and events that we've put on have sometimes been met with hostility in the past, but um, I'd say by the broader student populace, um, that there are students out there who are interested to hear our opinion and interested to dialogue with us. Um, yeah, so they've been, the club's had a bit of a rocky history with many attempts to um, sort of to silence it. Um, but yeah, we're still here and we think this general student population is still interested to hear what, we're, what we have to say. Yeah, if, if students are willing to have the, have the conversation with you about life issues, that's certainly a, a, a good start with you know, what you're trying to achieve. Yeah, yeah, and I really found that at our recent euthanasia stalls, we've set up a couple of stalls on campus and just invited students to dialogue with us about the issue of euthanasia. Um, and it's been really encouraging having conversations with students who maybe haven't thought of these issues before. Um, and yeah, just talking, having this dialogue with them. So I think the majority of students, well many students, are, are glad to have these types of conversations. Is it mainly uh, information uh, events that you run? What sort of other activism and support do you offer? Um, we have, so we have um, sort of informational, we've had stalls and stuff in the past, so um, trying to dialogue with students, as I've said. We also um, have done some volunteering and fundraising in the past, so volunteering at um, pregnancy clinics, um, doing work in bees and some fundraising for um, single mothers in the past. Um, as well as sort of just social events for the club. So, yeah, a bit of a range. So it's not just at the university you're involved with the broader pro-life movement in New Zealand? Um, yeah, so the, there's a couple of pro-life clubs around the country at different universities, and so we're all um, part of pro-life New Zealand. Um, but yeah, my, <coughs> my involvement in the movement has, been, has mainly been there uh, through the university club. Now, uh, obviously, we've, we've mentioned it briefly, but there's uh, obviously uh, a lot of, not, uh, not just abuse that you get for, you know, being pro-life, but also a lot of, you know, untruths that are, you know, hurled your way that, you know, you're you know, anti-woman, anti-freedom. Anti yeah. um, first of all, how do you uh, counter those arguments? And also, how do you personally deal with abuse? Because it's, yeah, it's not pleasant to... You know, be you know shouted, shouted down. You know, told you the worst person on the earth. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So the way we've countered the accusations against the club 
has been sort of with the facts because um, those allegations have been unsubstantiated. So we have been accused of um, misinformation, of harassing women, and some specific claims about using gory images on campus, and none of those have been true. So um, yeah, sort of the absence of any evidence has spoken for itself um, in terms of the accusations against us. Um, but yeah, it's been um, dealing with the opposition personally. It's um, I've received quite a lot of encouragement from other people who are um, who are glad that we're doing what we're doing and standing up for um, for our voice being able to be heard. Um, so that's been it's been quite encouraging and just um, remembering the broader purpose for why we why we're here, which is which is to support women and to support life at any stage. Um, just keeping that in mind has been helpful. Uh, I, I certainly myself, it's I, I've become used to you know abuse directed my way, but I, I always take the take take the overall picture that as long as there's people that like what I what I'm doing and and feel that I'm making a difference, that's that's what's important to me, and mm -hmm. I just ignore the you know the abuse and the the trolls. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I think seeing the support from some students on campus has definitely been encouraging. So knowing that our voice is wanted um, by a large portion of students on campus has been encouraging. And also, you mentioned before that you offer um, volunteer counselling services and support single mother. That's also another myth that's peddled about the pro-life movement, that once the child is born, uh, you don't care about the child and the mother, which of course is... Like, that's blatantly not true. Yeah, um, we haven't provided counselling, but we have volunteered at pregnancy clinics and um, done fundraising for solo mothers. So yes, yeah, that that is um, the core of our group is to support women going through crisis pregnancies. Um, and yeah, it's a it's a message of love at its core. Um, yeah, so I do think that's a, a misconception about the pro life movement as a whole is that they're not don't care about life um, after once it's out of the womb but um, yeah I think um, we're only a student group on we has to be acknowledged that we are only a group a small student group on campus so we do what we can um, but we're really glad of many pro-life organizations that exist um, to help women in those situations outside of what we can do as well Oh, it certainly sounds like you do already a lot, which is which is impressive. So you certainly deserve some some credit there. Now let's obviously talk about the what the the big story is with with your club. You were recently uh, disaffiliated from University of Auckland Student Association, and it was done by an online poll of students. Yeah. Now, how did that uh, come up, and why was it successful? And uh, What's your plan going forward? Yeah, so um, a number of weeks ago, um, an online, so a, a student referendum was held with the Students Association. So um, any student in the association could submit a question. Um, one of the questions that came up was by non, an anonymous um, submitter, um, and the question was Should AUSA disaffiliate the Pro Life Club and ban any clubs with similar ideologies from affiliating in the future? Um, we were thrown um, with no preparation. We had about two days between being notified of the question and um, appearing at a student forum um, to defend our existence as a club. We had about two days to prepare. Um, and yeah, then, then followed sort of a desperate campaign for um, our status of affiliation at university. So the voting was held over a week um, in August, and it was online, which gathered a lot of um, a lot more voters than had ever voted in a referendum like this before. Um, yeah, and so the result turned out to be um, about sixty percent. There were about one thousand seven hundred students who voted. Um, sorry, there were about two thousand seven hundred students who voted, and about sixty percent were for disaffiliation and about 40% were against disaffiliation um, and so with that majority the question was accepted although um, the result is still provisional at the moment 
Um, so we're still waiting on the Auckland University Students Association's legal counsel to come through um, because there were some doubts as to whether this, firstly, whether this um, action would even be constitutional for them, and secondly, whether it would e even be legal. Um, yeah, so we still haven't heard back on the legal side of that yet. Um, yeah, so at the moment, the disaffiliation is still um, is still provisional. And what would it mean to be disaffiliated? Like, how yeah. would that limit your activity? Um, there was a lot of confusion about this um, during the week, so we were actually given conflicting messages. Um, at one stage, we were told we were given we were told that we would lose access to certain AUSA facilities on campus, um, but then that turned out not to be the case. Um, so, the to me, um, the disaffiliation it's more of a symbolic. Um, statement <coughs> of AUSA um, that some voices aren't welcome even if they're um, peaceful or peaceful and respectfully put forward um, some opinions aren't welcome in the public dialogue um, so yeah we we are pretty dismayed that um, that a chunk of the students voted um, that our voice is not welcome on campus, um, not because of, or either believing that some of the accusations that were put forward to us, which would be quite sad if, if those were believed, or um, alternatively believing that even though we've been completely peaceful, um, some voices should not be on an equal platform with other voices. Um, yeah, so going, sorry, yeah, going forward we, um, will still attempt to operate as a club. Um, and so, yeah, we, we've got um, some plans for the future. Um, um, but we do believe that the second half of the question, which was um, to ban all clubs with similar ideologies, which is very ill-defined in itself, um, from affiliating with AUSA, we do believe that could limit clubs in the future and is an unfair disadvantage, which is blatantly based on on ideas and ideology. Yeah, I think that's what alarmed a lot of people when they heard about uh, your yeah. disaffiliation, that it said, and similar ideologies, which, uh, what does that mean? Does does that mean any right-wing right, right -wing group? Uh, obviously, there's a lot of uh, media coverage, especially over in the United States, about free speech on university campuses. Mm -hmm. Is Do you see this as a big problem in New Zealand as well? I see it as a growing trend. Um, and I'm definitely saddened by it. Um, I, I think the value of free speech and of open dialogues in our society is undeniable and it's sort of the reason that we have a democracy in the first place, the reason that we can have scientific progress, social progress and um, freedom from oppression really is based upon freedom of speech and open dialogue. And I think especially in universities, um, which have always been in the forefront, at the forefront of the free speech movement. Um, I think it's vitally important that what we, the open inquiry values that we base our academic um, inquiry on, um, I think it's sad that that's not, that that's being restricted in student culture going forward. So um, yeah, I do, I, we do see it as a, a growing, a worrying trend in New Zealand university culture, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's certainly uh, your disaffiliation. It, it's uh, it's made in international news. I saw it mentioned on on Daily Wire and Breitbart. So uh, it's uh, it's certainly uh, people people notice this, and it's it's happening in in Australia as well. It's I, I personally believe that universities are slowly becoming a a, a lost cause when it comes to um, obviously um, free free speech, but. But like, but like you said, it's you should you should be able to you know even if you disagree to debate things. But it seems yeah. that left wing groups they seem to define disagreement as hate speech, and of course hate speech is subjective, mm -hmm. and so they say any anything we disagree with is hate speech, and therefore it's justified shutting it down. Mm. I found it interesting the response of the Dunedin pro choice, um, so not pro life pro choice group. Um, at the University in Dunedin, um, they came out in support of our group's affiliation and they 
they mentioned um, how helpful that they thought open dialogue was. So, um, yeah, so I do, I just do have hope that um, even people with the opposing ideas to ours on pro-life issues, um, that there is some acknowledgement of the, the practical values of, value of free speech on campus. So yeah, I, I hope it's not a lost cause and it's very encouraging. Oh yeah, they're definitely so, not, yeah. uh, not all bad. Uh, uh, there, there is uh, a lot of still uh, decent people on the left and I, I definitely hope that their, their voices uh, become, become more prominent. Now, I'd like to obviously turn to the election where life issues have come to dominate. There, there's obviously the vote being held on euthanasia after, after the election, after the uh, private member's bill was drawn by, uh, from the ballot, David Seymour's uh, yeah. bill, and of course then there was Jacinta Ardern, Labour leader, saying during the debate that she wanted to take uh, abortion out of the, the Crimes Act. Does this, yeah. does this election turn into a real battle to protect life in New Zealand? Um, it, yeah, it's very interesting that those issues have come up. Um, we're not, the pro-life group itself is not a political group. Yes, yeah, yes. But when it comes to those issues, um, with Jacinda's um, statements about abortion, we definitely oppose um, her proposal um, for the reason that, you know, we, the, the core belief of our group is that the fetus has a right to life, and which makes abortion a life and death issue, which is appropriately situated in the Crimes Act. Um, but we would, um, we definitely push for more practical care and support for women going through crisis pregnancies, and that definitely needs to be seen on a policy level. Um, um, yeah, and with with Seymour's bill, obviously that's um, quite a current issue for us as well. Um, we definitely see it as a. Well, it's been questioned why we're interested in this um, in this issue, but we definitely see it as a. It's it's a life it's a life issue and it's a it deals with the value of life um, and since our group exists to protect the right to life for everyone from the unborn to the elderly and disabled or vulnerable in society um, we definitely see that as an issue we should be interested in um, yeah we we oppose his bill at the moment um, there's we just if we look at the actual legislation that's being proposed there's um, it opens the door far too wide and doesn't protect the vulnerable in our society, um, as well as promoting a more general message that um, that some struggles can't be, some pain is can, some pain cannot be borne, um, some pain can only but leads to death as the only acceptable choice. And looking at the issue of suicide, we, we strongly reject that message and we think it's a, a dangerous message to be sending, um, especially looking at New Zealand's youth suicide rates and stuff like that. It is definitely, I, I've noticed a lot of, of pushback against uh, uh, Jacinta's announcement, which is encouraging because I know mm -hmm. I'm from the Australian state of Victoria where we've got probably one of the worst abortion laws in the Western world right up until um, birth. And we're also debating euthanasia in the state parliament uh, as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, from our experience with the abortion law, once it's, it's changed, it's very, very, very difficult to get the debate uh, reopened again. So, so, so certainly, uh, I, I think you're you're right to you know be concerned and put in a, a lot of effort to fighting it. Yeah, we. Um, it's yeah, it's been it's very important to us and. Seeing it come up in the politics recently, we, we have to engage with it somehow. Yeah. Well, thank you, Joy, for um, sharing your story and that of uh, Pro Life Auckland. Cool. Uh, I hope that uh, the university allows you to, to stay affiliated. It seems that that's still uh, up in the air, but uh, good luck for your broader activism, and, and hopefully, uh, this election result will uh, be a victory for life. Cool, thank you so much. This has been an Unshackled Fast. Please like, comment, and subscribe. While you're here, grab our free ebook at theunshackledbattlefield.net 
and visit theunshackled.net for all the latest news and commentary.